Okay, we are continuing with the cash flow statements. Okay, here is an accounting cycle, a reflection of the year-end cycle of accounting activities. You remember the trial balance and return, uh, the pre-adjustment trial balance, you look at the adjustment, you do closing transfers in the general ledger. After that, you do what you call a post-adjustment trial balance. And then from there, now that's where the financial statements come in. Uh, the income statement and then the statement of financial position followed by the cash flow statement and the last thing would definitely be the analysis and interpretation of the financial statements okay this is just a baseline it's more or less like a revision of what you have already looked at in the previous grades okay we are also going to look uh, at this table a baseline activity make a list of receipts and payments that would be recorded in the cash journals classify or group your list according to balance sheet accounts and nominal accounts you have done this in grade 10 okay that is the table for you with uh, the receipts and the payments okay we have got under receipts we've got the sales uh we have got income receipts such as rent we've got receipts from debtors we've got interest income we also have got a fixed deposit that is matured it's a receipt uh, if a fixed deposit matures, it means money is coming back into the business account. Proceeds for the sale of fixed assets. Okay, ordinary share capital, issue of shares, receiving a loan. All these, we consider them as receipts. So in other words, when you are looking at the cash flow statement, all these items are actually going to, to cause an inflow. And then we also have what the payments section. We have payments of expenses such as insurance, uh, water and electricity. Purchases of stock, payments to creditors, interest, payments, tax payments to sales, payments to dividends, uh, of dividends to shareholders, investing in a fixed deposit. If money is transferred to a fixed deposit, that is money going out, purchasing fixed assets, repurchase of shares, paying back or repay the repayment of a loan, okay, or the installments. All these are payments or we consider them to be outflows. When we are looking at the cash flow statement okay the next item that is there is for us now to group all those items under what we call operating activities investing activities and financing activities okay all right so if we go back to the table you see that okay the receipts and payments above can be classified into three broad categories that form the basis or structure of the section in a cash flow statement as follows we have got what you call operating activities and investing activities also the financing activities okay when we look at the operating activities there is the profit motive that is indicated there also on the investing activities the profit motive is indicated the profit motives are basically the business motive the main reason why our businesses are established is to make profit so the profit motive, uh, it represents the core function of the business, which is to make profit, the reason for establishing the business. And then we also have got uh, purchasing the necessary assets to achieve the objective of generating a profit. Remember, fixed assets are the ones that are used to generate the profits for the business. And then we also have the section for the financing activities, which is, talking, which is uh, dealing with the capital employed, finding money, the money sources, the finance, to finance the things, necessary to achieve to achieve the objectives the own capital and the borrowed capital okay the capital issue the money is needed for all these things to become possible money is even needed to purchase the uh, the, the the fixed assets that are used to generate uh, the profits for the organization okay so you find out that as we look at the cash flow statement it is divided into these three sections the operating activities the investing activities and the financing activities okay and then the cash flow statement is essentially provides a detailed breakdown of the three activities above and conclude by showing the impact on the net change in cash and cash equivalents at the bottom of the statement so the last thing that we do record when we are looking at the cash flow statement it is uh, the balance of the cash and cash equivalents at the end or the net change or we can also say the, the net change the reason why we're doing uh, the cash flow statement we want to see 
the net change that actually took place, the case that we had at the beginning and the case that we had at the end. What was the net change there? Okay. What is it that I need from the financial statements to prepare the cash flow statements? Okay. For us to be able to do an, a, a, a cash flow statement, you find out that we, we need the income statement, we need the statement of financial position, and also we need the notes to the financial statements. For us to be able to do what? The cash flow statement. What is it that we we'll take from the income statement? We take depreciation, we take interest expense, and then the net profit before tax, and then the income tax. And then uh, the statement of financial position, what do we need? Uh, the current assets, the current liability, sales, income tax, shareholders for dividends, fixed assets, fixed deposit, fixed deposit. And then from the notes, we need the fixed asset note, share capital note, retained income, and dividend. Ordinary share capital and non-current liabilities. Okay. So these are some of the items uh, that are indicating exactly the, how the structure of the cash flow is going to be looking like. And also where we get most of the information that we use to prepare the cash flow statement. Okay, I'll, that is all for now. I'll see you again in the next video. Still on the cash flow. Thank you.